The Hungarian GP is next on the calendar, and after that, we're going on the summer break that is one month long. Mercedes have managed to find some decent pace recently, but although they've scored decent points, it's mostly due to the engine failures and reliability issues of their main rivals. Such was the case of Hamilton's podiums in Montreal, Silverstone and Austria. And although it seems like the team has found some decent pace recently, there is a huge chance that the Hungarian GP will bring problems yet again for the team. Want to find out more? Stick with us until the end of this video. Hint, it's an old friend of Mercedes that looks to make a comeback. The beginning of the 2022 season saw the phenomenon of porpoising making an entrance and it hasn't gone away on its own. Apart from Red Bull, every other team has struggled with it, and while some teams learned how to perform with it, Mercedes seemed to struggle the most. The team has performed miserably badly, with Hamilton finishing P10 and P14 in Jeddah and Imola, respectively. While Russell was able to finish in the top 5 in every race prior to the Silverstone crash, Hamilton just wasn't able to find the performance in the Mercedes. He often compared it to a battling rattlesnake that needs to be tamed. As of Russell, he spoke about his tenure in Williams and how that helped him to learn how to perform a troubling car. And it could be very true, as Hamilton has performed badly in 2009 for the last time in his career when he only managed to win two GPs, the Hungarian and the Singapore GP. Hamilton is currently the only driver on the grid that has maintained to win a race in every season he has raced so far, which is a record that could very well be broken this season. The porpoising culminated in Baku when Pierre Gasly said that he had to take painkillers in order to soothe the pain and Ricardo said that he had huge trouble navigating the car under bouncing. The Aussie also said that the McLaren didn't have trouble with porpoising as much prior to the Baku GP, but now that he felt it extensively, he feels sorry for the drivers that are enduring it consistently, possibly hinting towards Mercedes drivers. The pinnacle of the weekend was when Hamilton exited his car limping and holding his back, pointing out that the pain of the porpoising is something he had barely endured. Things got to a point where Wolf said that he doesn't know if Hamilton will participate in the Montreal GP, which took place just one week after. Hamilton said that he isn't feeling 100% ready, but he wouldn't miss the GP for the world and his teammate Russell, who is the director of the Grand Prix Drivers Association, pushed the FIA in the name of all drivers to make a necessary change. And changes were made by the governing body, as they said that they'll introduce a new metric that would measure the vertical oscillations of the car, or more precisely, the porpoising of the car. If the car fails to comply with the rules, then it will be forced to retire or to make changes to the ride height. Why is this a problem? Because this solution was available from day one, but Formula One is a sport in which you have to optimize the performance of the car, and there aren't any savings regarding the optimization of the car. Therefore, if a car was to raise its ride height, it would lose a massive amount of downforce and it will gain a huge amount of drag. This is something that Christian Horner has pointed out throughout the season multiple times towards the FIA and Mercedes, as he isn't remotely happy with how the governing body is making these changes to the rules. He feels like these are made just because one team is complaining a lot, in this case Mercedes, and if it was Red Bull or Ferrari that would have struggled, nothing would have been done. However, the races after Montreal, which is Silverstone, Austria and France, didn't see the porpoising phenomenon being present. This is mostly due to the fact that the surfaces of the tracks there are very smooth and flat, unlike Montreal and Baku, which are used for the everyday activities of the citizens there. Now, the next race in Hungary and the porpoising problem may very well be back. The Hungarian GP takes place at the Hungara ring and the surface of this track isn't as smooth as it was in the previous three races. This is why teams are expecting to experience the porpoising issue yet again after everybody thought that this problem had been eradicated after the challenging races in Baku and Montreal. One major issue here, contradictory to what happens in Baku and Montreal, is that the track is barely used throughout the year. This means that the surface becomes very dusty and green. The overtaking here is really challenging as this track is often referred to as Monaco without the walls. 
The track is full of bends and slow corners, something that has also challenged Mercedes in the past as we remember how they performed in Monaco. Here, they struggled a lot with the bottoming out problem, which came after the team allegedly fixed the porpoising issue, but now the car runs so low that the bottom of the car hits the tarmac really hard. This is one issue that could very well come back in Hungary. And in addition to the bends, the track is very slow, bumpy and narrow. The width of the track is a maximum of 15 meters, while the average width of the other races is an average of 20 meters. This means that if Mercedes cars are yet to struggle with the porpoising or bottoming out issues, passing here will be more or less impossible. One problem that the teams could also face is the tire management. Here, the track is incredibly hot, and if there isn't any rain coming like it did last year, the tire management will be a true challenge, just like in Austria. We've seen how Ferrari dominated the race by having the right suspension and right angle of their rear tires, and we've seen how Red Bull didn't manage to do the same, not even remotely. Vehicles must be adjusted to maintain maximum grip, and drivers have to keep this in mind when they are cornering a process that takes a huge toll on the tires. Last year, the start of the race was very interesting, as all of the racers except Lewis Hamilton decided to pit after the safety car entrance and change tires from intermediate to dry compound tires. This saw Hamilton starting alone in the grid, as he had to pit in lap 2 and had to climb from the rest of the field. He was lucky that there was a huge crash at turn 1 in lap 1, as his teammate Bottas took out Verstappen, Norris and Perez while failing to stomp his car. Hamilton still managed to finish B3, but was promoted to B2 after Vettel wasn't able to provide enough fuel sample after the race, as Verstappen finished B9 with a damaged car. With that being said, it's very likely that Mercedes will experience the bottoming out, a problem like they did in Monaco. The team said that they haven't found a magical fix for the problem, and now it's not present because of the surface of the tracks. In Hungary, we should expect Mercedes to struggle with their performance, and like them, Ferrari should also experience this problem, but not to a huge extent as Mercedes. One team that is set to dominate this race is Red Bull, as they haven't had a problem with the porpoising throughout the whole season. One reason why we might expect Ferrari to be more dominant here in Hungary is that they've proved to be the best teams when it comes to slow tracks like in Monaco. Red Bull was faster on the main straights, but Ferrari managed to catch up to them thanks to the new low downforce rear wing. Red Bull, however, wasn't able to fight back when it comes to tracks with low downforce and low speed corners. What do you think will happen at the Hungarian GP? Do you think we're up for an exciting race? Let us know in the comments below.